Okay, so. Originally wasn't going to do a video on this, but, you know, just after hearing all the stuff I have on the basket of deplorables comment, I decided I wanted to chime in my two cents, and I know this is going to shock some people who would generally watch my videos and generally tend to agree with me on this one, but, you know, obviously... Here is the actual footage of what people are upset about. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorable. And, okay, I understand that Trump brought a new segment of the population into politics, to be more precise, to be in opposition of the Clinton and Obama-style Democrats. Um, and for those of you who don't know what I mean, I'm going to clarify. It is the segment of the Democrats that will openly attack you for opposing them. Yes. And I said Clinton and uh, Obama-style Democrats for a specific reason. Um, you go back to the 90s, talk radio. What did Bill Clinton call them? Preachers of hate. Yes. Talk radio show hosts that had the gall to disagree with Bill Clinton were considered preachers of hate. Um, you go back to when Barack Obama was elected and the people that were opposing the agenda that he had and the Democrats in the House and Senate had, uh, it, you know, not all the Democrats in the House and Senate, obviously there were certain Democrats that didn't really favor some of these proposals, but that's a different story. But the Democrats that did support these favors, you know, they called the our opposition Tea Partiers, racist, terrorist. Anyone else remember that DHS uh, advisory uh, th memo that came out back in 2009? <laughs> you know, pretty much labeling anybody but straight Obama supporters uh, potential domestic terrorists. Yeah, so this is the mentality we're dealing with. Now, you know, for somebody like me who's been, I guess, vocal or, you know, at least observant of it for quite some time, the basket of deplorables comment doesn't shock me. But I can understand maybe people who've never been in politics before, never really paid attention before, now they're see Trump, they see Trump as something different. They see Trump as their candidate. They're supporting Trump because they like Trump. They're shocked because they never would have expected this out of Hillary to be called deplorable by Hillary. And yet they are. So, I can understand them, but, them on this one, but my big advice for you guys is you're going to get called these names. There's no two ways about it. Uh, that's kind of one of their tactics. It's one of the things they do. So, all I got to say on that one is don't, worry, but don't be worried about it. You know, if they've, uh, if you've got Hillary Clinton calling you a basket of deplorable, it means you're doing something right. You know, And given Hillary's word and track record, I wouldn't put too much weight into it anyway. Now, I'm going to get off topic a little bit here because I want to respond to one comment here that I've seen in my search for all this. Um, 
And it's coming up here in two seconds. How dare she? She disagrees with the other side. Yeah, Chink. <laughs> oh, how dare she, you know? And you're the perfect. You are the perfect person to say that, right, man? Because, you know, no, you don't ever get butthurt and upset about somebody uh, disagreeing with you. And, by the way, the people who were upset about the Basket of Deplorables comment, specifically that one, are upset not because she disagreed with them, but because she's insulting people. She's calling somebody a basket of deplorables. That's not disagreeing with them. That's calling them a name. You know? And I think, you know, given all of your, oh, this is offensive rants, and, oh, well, how could somebody say something like that rants? Uh, the least you could do is be understanding that maybe people on the other side just maybe don't like to be insulted either. I think just maybe you think that's a possibility there. <sighs> okay. So on to the next thing that this one does bug the hell out of me. Have our disagreements and believe me, I understand that. I think that's healthy. We need good debates, but we need to do it in a respectful way. Not finger pointing and blaming and stirring up this bigotry and prejudice. And I. Get another beer. You know, I really do need to keep that 12 pack of beer beside me, you know, whenever I do these response videos to stupidity, you know. Like, you know, kind of like with the States United on uh, Guns With History. But, no, anyway. Everyone catch what she just said. Everyone catch all the double speak in there. All the uh, poisoning of the well. You notice how she said, well, uh, we can disagree and everything, and that's okay. That's perfectly healthy. Until you just start actually disagreeing with her disagree with her on socialized medicine. Well, uh, you must uh, hate blacks. You must be racist. Start disagreeing with her on uh, uh, her propaganda about 77 cents on the dollar, you know, and I guarantee you, you're a sexist. You know? I di I disagree with her on a gun control law. Oppose her next gun control proposal and you want dead children all of a sudden. Yeah, you know, so she's obviously not being civil there, a, a finger pointing, like with the lawsuit, you know, uh, on uh, Remington, made by some, I guess, the victims of, well, some of the families of the victims of Sandy Hook, uh, you know, which, that's not finger pointing, I don't know what else is, I mean, you know, the manufacturer had to produce a rifle, sell it to a licensed FFL. The licensed FFL had to perform a background check on the person who he sold it to, or he or she sold it to. And then the gun uh, was taken from the owner after the owner was murdered and then was used to go shoot up the school and all of a sudden it's Remington's fault. I mean, if that's not finger pointing, what else is? And how many times did we not hear in the 2008 presidential debates, you know, by another other than Barack Obama, the failed policies of George Bush, George Bush, George Bush, George Bush. You know, is that not finger pointing? By the way, Hillary, Barack Obama is your boss still, you know. He was the one who appointed you to Secretary of State. And yet you're going to sit up here and brazenly say, well, let's not do any finger pointing now. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then you top that all off with out resorting to bigotry and prejudice. You know, something, uh, false accusations that you are making at your opponents, that you are leveling at your opponents. You know? 
And what? I know in this speech, uh, you know, you said that David Duke endorsed Trump and that, well, oh, Trump is such a bad guy for not disavowing David Duke. Well, I've got a question for you, Hillary. When are you and the rest of the Democrats going to disavow Robert Byrd? You know, and it's not like, you know, uh, Robert Byrd was just some pissant Democrat supporter who threw in an endorsement. No, Robert Byrd was a Democrat senator up until he passed away in 2010. And by the way, yes, he had voted in favor of the Affordable Care Act. You know, the only Klan's member in Congress at the time was Robert Burt. Uh, nowadays, there aren't any more Klan's members in Congress, but the very last one to be in Congress was a Democrat for some reason. And yet, the Democrats have failed to disavow him, you know. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, you're the head of the DNC. I mean, come on. When are you going to disavow Robert Byrd? See, this right here is what disturbs me about Hillary Clinton. You know? Is that she can blatantly give this double speak. And she still has supporters. But... You know, I mean, uh, again, uh, it feels like I'm beating a dead horse with this one. You know, if you haven't gotten it by now, I mean, uh, something tells me you're not going to get it. So, And I promise you this, with your help, I will be a president for Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. For those who vote for me and for those who vote against me, I will be a president. Guys, seems like I have to drink a lot more and smoke a lot more when we're responding to this. Anyone else notice how arrogant her statements were? I represent you even though you didn't vote for me. Really? <laughs> I mean, I could go on to Hillary's own website, look at her own platform right now and find a bunch of examples of how she doesn't represent me. I'd be hard-pressed to find a way she did represent me based off her own platform. But isn't funny, you know, the narcissism that you have to have to go out and claim you speak for somebody else, even if they just agree with you. Now, Trump, I'm probably going to be voting for Trump. In fact, I'm a little sacred. I'm definitely going to be voting for Trump because I don't want this person in office and I don't particularly agree with a lot of things that Gary Johnson had to say. So, on that note, I wouldn't put up with Trump claiming he spoke for me. And I tend to agree with him more than this person. So, why would I ever accept this person as a representative of me. You know? Oh, sure. I mean, she might be elected. And sure, she might be the president. But that doesn't mean she represents my interests. And by the way, in that position, you shouldn't be representing one group's interest or another group's interest or anything like that. Uh... He's supposed to be the President of the United States. Uh, and you're supposed to... How do I put this? Back out of more issues that should be a little bit more local. And deal with more of a foreign policy issue. But, needless to say... That's just not the country we live in, and that's not the mindset of some of our voters. And I can say that I'm not running for office, and I'm definitely not claiming to speak for them. You know? People who sit there and want to 
vote for uh, somebody because they claim they speak for them. Shoot. Like all the people who are sitting there saying that you should, as a woman, vote for Hillary Clinton because she's a woman and she's going to represent you too. Well, that would just be like somebody uh, telling me I should vote for Michael Bloomberg because he's a straight uh, white man and therefore he's automatically going to speak for me. Even though I know he's not. But if you're looking to vote an election for somebody who may speak for you and really shouldn't be voting for anybody so they can speak for you, you should be voting for somebody who is going to put the interests of their district first, and that would be in the House of Representatives. You know, that's how the system works. And I understand that there is a segment of the country that are looking to elect leaders that speak for them. And I gotta say, if you're, if you think for one second any of your elected leaders speak for you, well, you're thoroughly mistaken. They don't know you. They're not in your situation. They don't care about you. <laughs> and if you're that pathetic and desperate that you need somebody to speak for you in life or represent you personally in life, well, <laughs> you're not a very strong or independent person. You know? And you're really not ready to live in a free society. And again, remember if that's insulting to you. Well, I'm not running for an office. And I'm certainly not pretending that are trying to get everyone else to believe that I speak for you. She is, though. All right. Y'all take her easy now.